I just experienced many symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Um, and I, I thought I, it was just uniquely me. Boys are sexually abused in, um, in vast numbers and vastly more frequently than as a society we're recognizing. I was absolutely amazed that in fact it was so common among sexual abuse survivors of feeling alone or feeling it was only you. I know that childhood rape separated me from my spirit. I thought I was broken most of my life. I struggled, fought, cried, prayed, and meditated my way back to me. While he was raping me, I felt like I left my body because I thought I was gonna die. So I wasn't present there. And actually, I had agreed to die at that point. My grandmother just died last year. But she, she took me from my mom for about three months. <clears throat> and I don't think I would have lived without my, if my grandmother hadn't done that. Like she nurtured me and sheltered me and brought me back to myself. Because of my upbringing and just the pride that was instilled with me, I was able to continue to do so many successful things. I graduated from UC Berkeley. I'm a teacher, I've taught for 14 years. I've motivated many young people to be their greatest selves. And even throughout my pain, I was still able to help other people work through their own shame and guilt and even denial about childhood sexual abuse. He must have had my head on a pillow because the, um, I was suffocating. And it's not something that should be a secret. I was 13 when the abuse first started, and uh, he abused me several times a week for several years, all over this country, and even on a trip to Europe. He began to take the same interest and do the same things with my younger brother, and that concerned me. And it definitely galvanized my absolute determination to send a message, to speak a truth, to help another survivor, without a doubt. I've always thought that asking for help would make me appear to be weak or not man enough, but actually asking for help is the most um, profound act of kindness that I can do for myself. There are so few men who've been abused who are getting help. It's tragic. It, it's, it means there's so much more suffering than there needs to be. I would call around to rape crisis centers and places that said they specialized in childhood sexual abuse, but no one had any place for men. And when they would, when I would ask the questions about men, everyone always thought I was a perpetrator. A major part of my healing process has been in like fellowshipping with other men um, and trusting, you know, and being able to be vulnerable and to be close and not feel like um, I was under threat or that anyone would take anything from me. This group has been beyond words amazing for me and my healing. My coping mechanism for a long time was alcohol and drugs, which I think is common with you know, men or anyone um, dealing with traumatic situations. Until I owned what had happened, it had been suffering up to that point. And then the pain of uh, owning it was kind of when the healing started. You know, I've had a lot of people ask me if you know, if I'm if I'm gay because of the rape. Rape is about power and control, and it's not about sexuality. At that time, when I reported him under New Jersey law, they were required to report him to the police. They did not. Had they, the criminal statute of limitations would have still been in, a, in effect, and he would have been held accountable. But because they did not, he is a free man today. Good morning, Good Senator. We want to talk about the initiative to move the statute of limitations, you know, eliminating the statute of limitations for uh, crimes committed against uh, children. We certainly sent a very strong message to the institutions who are harboring and sex offenders that, that they can no longer get away with it. And Mark's advocacy and others, I think, will have a real impact in terms of protecting children in those institutions. Now, 
Well, I think he has to be more passionate than uh... <laughs> <laughs> My freshman year in high school, I was always in the office for fighting and throwing chairs and just being really, really angry. Um, one of the vice principals told me that they were thinking about expelling me from the school, and he said that it wouldn't even be any use because I would either wind up killing someone or someone was going to kill me if I didn't control my emotional state. Well, I'm a forensic psychologist. And I've been researching child abuse, and in particular, the impact of sexual abuse on men. I started getting inquiries from attorneys who were representing men uh, who'd been charged with uh, serious crime, basically all homicide. I met uh, JT, uh, I believe it was 1994. He had been sentenced to death already. I'm not sure that I've met anybody who had a worse history of sexual abuse. Um, and JT was abused in other ways as well, psychologically, you know, physically abused. Um, but the sexual abuse was um, just horrific. What happened when you came in here after the crime? Wow. Uh, through some kind of crazy, tragic means, I had done to somebody else what I wanted to do to myself. This is my total failure as a human being to have uh, taken a life. That's hard. I don't need no more than that, believe me. That's, that's crushing. I think there's a lot that you could say to young men who have been sexually abused, who are running from it. Plain and simple, I thought I was the cause. The reason why these people were sexually yeah. abusing you. Yeah, I thought I was the cause. One of the main reasons that I do this work is that I was abused when I was a kid. Thank you for sharing that. Well, we Give each other strength, and that's what we do. You remember, that's what I got from you. I'm passing it forward. Things normal men experience, whether it be intimacy with their own spouse or partner, whatever it is, it's very different for that survivor. A simple touch could trigger uh, memories or flashbacks, and it makes it very difficult to have a normal, safe relationship. I think it's important for people who want to have an intimate relationship with someone who's had particularly a childhood trauma, uh, psychological trauma, to understand that what's involved is, is to enter into that journey with the person. It's, it's not simply to stand near them and be sympathetic and listen well. Um, it's, it's really a journey that you're, you will undertake together. There was nothing more liberating. I can't recall a bigger step in my own healing than when I broke my silence and told my story. And when you learn to, uh, to hope and trust and understand it's okay to be able to express yourself. Even if it's something simple like playing with your kids. <laughs> I know now that I, if a child would talk to me about it, I know what to do and I know the tools that I have in place. But I think if a child talks to an adult about it, it's their responsibility to get help. I've taken my life back and I recognize it for what it is. And it was not something I did. So I have, I don't have that shame. I've shed that shame. The blame belongs there, not here. I think we have to reach out to teenagers um, and, and to, to young men in their, in their early 20s and in their mid-20s. Um, and we have to reach out to them in a very, very proactive way. Men need to have hope. And when you have hope, you will heal, without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah.